सौरभ कब स्टार्ट हो बोल भी हेलो गुड मॉर्निंग हेलो हाँ गुड मॉर्निंग अच्छा सर गुड मॉर्निंग सर शुरू कौन सी सो गुड मॉर्निंग इट इज ए प्राउड मुमेंट फॉर ऑल ऑफ अस टू कॉन्डक्ट एन इंटरनेशनल वेब इनर on trajectory of covid-19 pandemic awareness treatment and genomic insight for future development it is our extreme privilege and honor to have distinguished faculties eminent academicians in the form of our honorable speakers we have dr pradeep kumar dasmapatra associate professor and head department of microbiology of raiganj university he will deliver his lecture on significance of microbiological knowledge and awareness in 21st century with special reference to covid-19 we have another distinguished faculty with us dr keshav chandra mondol the professor and head department of microbiology vidyasagar university vindapur west bengal he will deliver his speech on post corona interaction the another presentation will be delivered by dr bhasuti pandit associate professor national institute of biomedical genomics kollani her topic of discussion will be covid-19 genomic perspective of pathogen and host on day 2 we will have the lecture from dr atin mondol the eminent scientist and associate professor from division of molecular medicine bose institute calcutta the final presentation will be given by dr deepak bhargav professor and head department of microbiology as well as acting vice principal of national medical college nepal he will deliver his lecture on pharmacological approaches to combat sars cov2 infection so we will all be enlightened by their work their thoughts and their ideas i convey my most sincere regards to the all respected speakers to find some time for us the department of microbiology has started its journey since 2002 it has the legacy of arranging many academic and social awareness program however it is the first time that we are organizing an international webinar i feel glad to announce that 
we have received more than 1200 registrations from various parts of the country and abroad i am thankful to the all respected faculty members from colleges and universities from iits distinguished scientists from premier organizations like isro and drdo doctors and medical personnel research scholars students of ug and pg level students of various schools non teaching staffs and to all who has shown interest to participate in this program for the betterment of the society we never got diverted from the blessings of our honorable principal sir dr sumil kumar mukherjee i am grateful to him and to the all respected faculty members of our college for their continuous encouragement and support now may i request our honorable principal sir to deliver the welcome address sir amra principal sir please increase your volume namaskar good morning everybody my regards to honorable dignitaries my love and best wishes to my colleagues my friends my juniors and my beloved students who are attending this webinar i welcome all of you on on behalf of makura shumilini college to two day international webinar as organized by the department of microbiology on the topic trajectory of covid 19 pandemic awareness treatment and future geno genomic insight for future development i must be thankful to dr orindam ganguli and his team professor saurabh singh and all the departmental students to render their persistent efforts in organizing this webinar on such a relevant and burning topic of the day i also we are also grateful to honorable vice chancellor bakura university for conveying his best wishes message to us on this very occasion we have already got introduction of our honorable speakers of this two days 14th and 15th june 2020 so i am not going to introduce further dr orindam ganguli has completed that part now before entering into the actual topic of discussion i want to add a few words about our college ours is a nac accredited second cycle b plus graded college established on 1st september 1948 being situated at the heart of the bakuda district town with two nearby colleges bakuda christian college and bakuda jila sharadamuni mahila mahavidyapit we were initially under bakuda sammelani trust body hence the name bakuda sammelani and affiliated to calcutta university in the year to 1962 our affiliation was shifted to badwan university and at present we are under newly formed bakuda university on and from 1st january 2017 a total of 3000 students have been getting the scope of pursuing their higher studies in both undergraduate and postgraduate courses in undergraduate subjects so 18 subjects are there in arts science and commerce whereas in postgraduate courses there are two subjects english and chemistry now let us come to the point of covid 19 we are very much familiar with this term during the last few months and also our minds become full of panic when we, when we heard there this covid 19 because 
every day we are getting the reports of deaths thousands of report people are dying every day from all over the world at present more near about 80 lakh people have been affected and more than 4 lakh people have already died the countries like the usa the brazil russia germany italy spain france are highly victimized and recently india has also joined the rally in the question of number of attacks of this covid-19 india has now secured the fourth position after the usa brazil russia and then india a total of more than 3 lakh people have been affected at present and near about 9000 people have died and good news is that the recovery rate is also high 50% about total infected people then we 1 lakh 36000 so far report received from the health ministry government of india now what let us know what is covid 19 and what is corona virus in december 2019 a disease outbreak was reported from wuhan china on 31st december 2019 it was traced to a novel strain of corona virus and it was initially named as 2019 an cough but later on it was renamed by the international committee taxonomy of viruses as sars cov 2 sars means severe acute respiratory syndrome and this new strain is a group of beta corona virus of group 2b it has 70% similarity with sars cov and 96% similarity with the beta bad corona virus hence it is also suspected that this virus is originated from bat and the disease in human which is caused by this virus is known as covid-19 and world health organization has considered is public health emergency of international concern on 30th january 2020 and on 11th march 2020 it was declared pandemic on account of its global outbreak and since then nationwide lockdowns and travel restrictions have been imposed in different countries and there are personal level precautionary measures are also being taken now let us come to the point of symptoms what are the symptoms of covid-19 fever fatigue sore throat respiratory trouble respiratory tract infection and the virus is highly transmissible it transmits from one host to another through close contact through respiratory droplets either by sneezing or cough and exhale also and this virus survive for several hours on table chairs on door handles when it, they are com- these are contaminated by infected persons the incubation period of this virus is 14 days incubation that means the entry of the pathogen within the host and expression final expression of these symptoms is 14 days it is not always that all, everybody who every person who gets attacked by this virus will show the symptom some so mild get mild symptoms and they recover also while others who have got less immunity power particularly aged people they will be more victim of this covid 19 now question question of treatment regarding treatment actually there is no approved 
treatment or vaccine till date. So what is to be done? We have to follow the personal level precautionary measures and also government guidelines. That means the maintaining social distancing, which is government is repeatedly instructing the public to follow the social distancing so that virus cannot come in close, uh, cannot transmit through close contact. Through by washing our hands at regular intervals with hand sanitizers or soaps, using face mask so that the while we sneeze or when we cough, the respiratory droplets do not, do not come out. Avoid touching our hands, uh, touching our nose, eyes or mouth with our hands. And practicing respiratory hygiene. That means while sneezing or coughing, we should cover our mouth or nose by bent elbow, which is also instructed by the government also. So these are the precautionary measures we can take. Now, question of treatment, as there is no, I've already told that the no confirmed or approved case uh, treatment. So, although some medicines like hydroxychloroquine, the quinine compound, or remdesivir, the broad spectrum antiviral drug, are being produced by biopharmaceutical companies. They are doing well. And they are used also in many countries like USA, Britain, in India also. And in homeopathy also, it is, it is claimed that some medicines like arsenic alba, bryonia alba, gelsimium, they are also doing well in bringing the immunity power of the public. Now, regarding the genomic constitution, genomic insight of this virus. This virus is single-stranded positive sense RNA virus. It is the largest among the RNA viruses with 26 to 32 kilobases. This virus and the nucleocapsid with helical symmetry is enclosed within a cover sith that is made up of lipid bilayer in which the spikes, club-shaped spikes, are anchored. These club-shaped spikes, about 74 in number, average. They are arranged in such a way that they form an image reminiscent of solar corona, hence, why, hence the name coronavirus. Now, this virus, this RNA genome, has the five methylated cap at the five days end, and polyadenylated tail at the three descent. So, during the re replication of this virus, when it attaches the host complementary cell, the spikes which helps for attachment, the RNA genome gets entered into the host cell, after entering the into the host cell, the virus gets uncoated first. Then this RNA is released into cytoplasm and attaches itself with the host ribosome for future translation. The RNA recombination is the guiding force for Determination of genetic variability for capability of the pathogen to jump from one host to another and also determining the release of the new coronavirus. So, I think most re researches are al already being pursued in different corners of the world and till date 150 projects have been undertaken to grow vaccines, to develop vaccines against this COVID-19. And I think in near future, 
will get better result better report also and we'll get more informations about the topic from our honorable speakers in these two days and get ourselves enriched with their knowledge and i wish this seminar a grand success and at the same time i wish the invention of vaccine in near future for the welfare of mankind thank you thank you all the best thank you sir thank you for your vivid presentation on covid 19 and thank you for your warm welcome address now we are able to start our lecture session but before doing that may i request dr ashish mondo the associate professor department of botany ug and pg of vishnupur uh, uh, ramananda college to kindly chair the session thank you thank you sir i am very much uh, uh, glad to get this honor and i am uh, the latest start the session so our first uh, can i can yes, we start yeah i want to start sir so the first presentation will be given by dr pradeep kumar given dr pradeep kumar dasma patro okay. associate professor and head department of microbiology of raigonj university raigonj Dr. Pradeep Kumar Dasmapatra did his PhD in the year of 2008 from Vidyasagar University. He is now working as an associate professor and head in the Department of Microbiology, Raigonj University, Raigonj, Uttar Dinajpur, West Bengal, India. He is also acting as a director of Professor A K Bhutra Environment Conservation Center of Raigonj University. Dr. Dasmapatra has significantly contributed. in the field of microbial enzyme biotechnology environmental and industrial microbiology he has worked on microbial nutrition and diversity fermentation probiotics immobilization bioinformatics and enzymes like tannase xylarase amylase cellulase keratinase and others he is presently working on metabiotics dr dasmapatra has published one book on microbial fermentation and enzyme technology from crc press taylor and francis group and more than 124 original research papers in national and international reputed journals five book chapters five review papers six popular articles and filed two patents he has also attended eight training programs on microbial research covered 40 national and international conferences and delivered 16 invited lectures dr mohapatra has more than 20 years of research and 13 years of teaching experiences and received research funds from ugc government of india biostat india limited and sanzine private limited eight phd students already awarded phd under his supervision three have submitted their thesis and another four are working Dr Mohapatra has received Junior Scientist of the Year award in 2008 and Environmentalist of the Year award in 2009 from National Environmental Science Academy New Delhi. He was nominated as fellow of the Society for Applied Biotechnology in the year of 2011. He is also serving as an editorial board member of three reputed journals and reviewers of many journals of Elsevier, Blackwell, Springer and Taylor and Francis Dr Mohapatra is also associated with many academic and research societies like AFB France NESA New Delhi BRSI Trivandrum AMI New Delhi PVVM Kolkata the Indian Science Congress Association Kolkata and SAV Dharwad and others so now may i request Dr Pradeep Kumar Dasmapatra to deliver his valuable speech
सर प्लीज अनम्यूट योर वॉइस आई एम रिक्वेस्टिंग डॉक्टर प्रदीप कुमार दास मोहन को प्लीज अनम्यूट योर वॉइस सर प्लीज अनम्यूट योर वॉइस प्रदीप बाबू प्लीज अनम्यूट योर वॉइस अरे बोल तो तो वो कहने बोल तो ये आना ये बोल तो देखो please say few words so that we can hear your voice कनेक्शन प्रॉब्लम चल रही थी और ना हां ऐसे प्रॉब्लम हो रही है सोरो बैठो साथ में राइट पर समथिंग इज रॉन्ग इन द नेक्स्ट नेटवर्क सिस्टम इज मे बी बिकॉज़ ही इज नाउ अनम्यूटेड बट यू नो नॉन ऑफ हिज वर्ड इज नॉट ऑडिबल प्रदीप बाबू एम आई ऑडिबल टू यू हेलो डॉक्टर मोहम्मद सर एम आई ऑडिबल टू यू I think we lost the connection. 
we are trying to get customer hotas as soon as possible. The slide is visible, sir. But the voice is not coming. So we have to wait a bit for the proper network connection. So everything will be all right in due time. And yes, left the meeting and we will rejoin.
then in your entire screen. getting the picture sir hello sir we are not yet getting the picture of your screen choro please guide sir yes, sir Convener of the seminar, Dr. Arindam Ganguly. Okay, okay. Okay. Now the speakers you of this. Hey, Ami Shundavachi. Hello. Good morning. Respected principal, Dr. Shamit Kumar Mukherjee, convener of this today's international webinar, Dr. Orindam Gangoli, HOD of the Department of Microbiology, Organizing Secretary, Mr. Saurav Singh, eminent speakers of this today's international seminar, Professor Keshav Chandra Mondal from Vidyasagar University, Dr. Bhashuti Pandit, NIBG Kalyani, Dr. Atin Kumar Mondal, Bose Institute, 
and the Pradeep of Bhargav from Nepal. Really, we are facing a very tragic moment by the virus, basically the coronavirus or the coronavirus COVID-19 disease. In 1918, the influence of influenza virus or influenza pandemic was the most severe pandemic in recent history. It was caused by H1N1 virus. It is estimated that about 500 million people or one third of the world's population became infected with this virus. The number of deaths was estimated to be at least 50 million worldwide. At that time also there was no viral recovery as well as drugs. So non-pharmaceutical -pharmace interventions were the main reasons to overcome these outbreaks like isolation, quarantine, good personal hygiene, use of disinfectant and limitation of public gather. It is very easy to say these few words, but it's very difficult to maintain all these things in day-to-day -day life. In this scenario, I am selecting a title for this webinar, Significance of Microbiological Knowledge and Awareness in 21st century with special reference to COVID-19. This microbiology is a subject began with the discovery of microorganisms in 1674 by Anthony van Leeuwenhoek using a microscope of his own design. Microorganisms live in every parts of the biosphere, soil, hot spring, sports, and atmosphere, as well, as well as in the vacuum also. In studying with these microorganisms, we have to remember the Lazarus robot codes in the initial levels. The robot codes saw that microorganism was disease in 1876. Basically, we know that life as we know, it could not exist without microorganisms. And microorganisms and their importance are enromas. So we have to read, we have to nurture the microbiology to understand how microbes affect human health. To understand life processes of microbes and are common to organisms, as well as to understand how microbes can be used for our benefit. So, microbial cells basically prokaryotes and eukaryotes, it is well known all of us. And there are six main classes of microbes starting from fungi. Protozoa, algae, prokarya, salmon, and virus. Yes. So we are deeply concerned with the viruses. So we bit of our spontaneous generations led in part to the development of generalized scientific methods. Observations, hypothesis. experiment theory and these four things are based upon any discovery in every sphere. If we think the position of viruses and the biological spectrum, the viruses infect every type of cells, including bacteria also. The bacteria in fact
the animals, humans, as well as virus. Also, infected. So, whenever virus infection takes place, there is a secondary infection by the bacteria that also takes place. So, the seawater can contain 100 million viruses per ml just to keep environment. For many years, the cause of viral infection was unknown. But Louis Pasteur postulated that a living thing smaller than bacteria caused these diseases. Ivanovsky and Bidering showed that the disease in tobacco was caused by the virus in 1892. Loeffler and Frost discovered an animal virus caused foot and mouth disease in cattle. Questions. There are many questions about the virus. Are they organisms? That is, are they alive? What role did viruses play in the evolution of life? What are their distinctive biological characteristics? How can particles so small, simple, and seemingly insignificant be causing diseases and even death? What instances are so many? So there are debates, there are two sides of the debate. Since viruses are unable to replicate independently from the host cell, they are not living things and should be called infectious molecules. In another side of the debate, even the viruses do not exhibit most of the life processes of cells, but they can direct the life processes. This is the vital things, and thus are certainly more than the inert and lifeless molecules. So, viruses are better described as active or inactive rather than alive or dead. The vital role of viruses in evolutions, virus infects cells and influence their genetic makeup. We all are known Whatever the expression characters in living organisms are governed by the genetic matter. And the viruses directly regulate the genetic matter. The saves, the waste, cells, tissues, bacteria, plants, and animals have evolved. An estimate 10% of the human genome consists of sequences that come from viruses. 10 to 20 percent of bacterial DNA contains viral sequences. If we think about the properties of viruses, though it is well known, but just to imagine, it 10 to the power 31 virus particle on Earth, and approximately 10 times the number of prokaryotes, and molecules on virus surface impact a high specificity for attachment to host cells. Because without attachment, without specificity, virus cannot infect. And this specific size is always prevalent, in view, always ready to eat a flower bouquet to receive the viruses. And viruses lack enzymes for most metabolic processes and lack machinery for synthesizing the proteins. How so viruses can classify and name? The new classification systems in hosts, disease, they cause structure chemical composition and similarity in genetic makeup and these are decided by the International <laughs> Committee on the Taxonomy of Viruses. If you just compare the size, you can see in the screen the E. coli cell size and in the last part of these uh, cells this is yellow fever virus and hemoglobin molecule. They are very small as compared to the bacteria also. Viral components having the capsids, envelopes, spike, and the virion, these are required for their 
synthesis. The naked virus, as you can see, Sorry to interrupt, sir. Sorry to interrupt you. But your voice is not coming right now. Containing multiple nuclei. Yes, it is clear. The accumulated damage or the virus infection in most of the cells. The infection persistent or maybe the chronic or I think Dr. Patil has certain network problem. So what do you, Asis Babu, by the time he may join with us? Okay, but uh, can we wait uh, for those minutes? Yes, 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 we will wait for you. Okay, okay. It was a uh, uh, talk was uh, regarding the general microbiological aspects and uh, we are entering within the matter uh, regarding the viral and then I think uh, it will be the uh, description or conditions <coughs> of uh, pandemic situation. But uh, unfortunately, um, we have lost the connectivity. I think uh, the connectivity will come soon. So, um, let us let us uh, wait for uh, some time, some minutes, some few minutes, a few seconds, a few times. And yes. sure that he will return back. And their connectivity the, uh, uh, is uh, to some extent a uh, little bit wrong with us. We are unlucky. Uh, at the previous time, initially, it was very good. Okay, uh, Dr. Adinam Ganguly, then uh, how much time we may wait? Okay. Two to three minutes we may wait. I am calling him. Sir? Okay. Yes, 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 yes,
ओके ओके फैमिली ऑफ वायरसेस व्हिच कॉजेस इनलेस इन एनिमल्स और ह्यूमंस इन ह्यूमंस सेवरल कोरोना वायरसेस आर नोन टू कॉज रेस्पिरेटरी इंफेक्शन रेंजिंग फ्रॉम द कॉमन कोल्ड टू मोर सीवियर डिजीज सच एज मिडिल ईस्ट रेस्पिरेटरी सिंड्रोम एज वेल एज सीवियर एक्यूट रेस्पिरेटरी सिंड्रोम और सस covid-19 is the infectious disease caused by the most recently discovered coronavirus this new virus and disease were unknown before to before the outbreak began in wuhan china in december 2019 covid-19 is now a pandemic affecting many countries globally and it is under the genus beta coronavirus and first discovered in 1930s by a teacher and mc owen from chicken but human coronaviruses were discovered in the 1960s it is nothing new for the microbiologist by the ec kendel welcome byon and david tyrell the electron microscopy revealed the pleomorphic structure of coronaviruses to be spherical large and enveloped with a diameter of 80 to 160 nanometer surface of the virion gives the corona cell to the virus It is entirely covered by the prominent bulbous or tear drop-like structure, widely spaced, surface projections of about 20 nanometer, sometimes rods like long along with the thin surface projections. Other than the spikes, are observed in few coronaviruses, and in some of the cases they are distal and contain spherical or T-shaped configuration. The beta coronaviruses genome encodes several structures. protein including the glycosylated spike or s protein it functions as a major inducer of host immune response and this protein mediates host cell invasions by both sars coronavirus as well as sars coronavirus 2 uh, binding to a receptor protein called angiotensin converting enzyme to or ac2 located on the surface membrane of the host cell you can see the pictures in the slide this sars cov2 or covid 19 genome is the largest known genome among rna viruses and is approximately 30000 nucleotides 
you can see the genome of coronavirus as well as the genome of SARS coronavirus, how they are different. SARS coronavirus COVID 19 genome size ranges from about 27 to 34 kilobase. The viral genome also includes several non structural proteins, including RNA dependent RNA polymerase, coronavirus named protease, as well as pattern like protease or PL pro. If you see the diagram, the pathways of COVID 19 replications, the SARS CoV 2 specifically binds the receptors or we can say that angiotensin converting enzyme or AC2 receptors. And as soon as the genetic material released into the cytoplasm, so it is a positive strand RNA, so immediately start synthesizing the proteins. Then finally, the replicates and replication transcriptase complex are formed. And by the complementary strands by following the positive strand RNA, the negative strand genomes are synthesized, and subgenomic RNA are also synthesized. So genomic RNA for their uh, their genome as, as well as the subgenomic RNA for the nucleocapsid, spike, membrane, and envelope proteins. They are translations or translated of the viral structural proteins by endoplasmic reticulum on the host. And finally, there is the new viral variant particles on and the assembly matured, then it released by the end exocytosis. And this process is continuously going on and a huge number of virus particles are developed. And if we think about the pathogenesis, in phase one infection of epithelial cell, it may be in the lung or it may be in the intestinal infection. This search or COVID-19 or coronavirus infects the lung epithelial cells as well as the intestinal epithelial cells. Then cytokine or chemokines are released in phase two, the acute inflammation and immune cells activation. And in severe diseases, you can see that the two processes are going on. One is for antiviral immunity or suppression of the hyperinflammation by the immunocells and their mediators. Or if not, then there is a disease or the cytokine storm syndromes, neutrophilia, monocytopenia, and lymphopenia are developed. And there is a soft kidney damage, organ failure, as well as for so many secondary infections by the bacteria and other viruses also. How COVID-19 affects the body? It may be the mild or severe or critical. In critical, it's the outside the immune response to viral infections leads to the sepsis and the dangerous drop in the blood pressure, a condition known as septic shock, organs failed due to lack of oxygen, in another way due to immunological interaction, inflammation, and septic shock also there. The symptoms are very common, fever, coughing, suddenness of the Static chills, body ache, headaches or throat, loss of smell or taste, nausea, diarrhea, even bluish leaves or face. The virus can lead to the pneumonia, respiratory failure, septic shock, and death. Many COVID-19 complications may be caused by a condition known as cytokine release syndrome or a cytokine storm. This is when an infection triggers your immune system. To flow to your bloodstream with inflammatory protein called cytokines, and they can kill tissue and damage your organs. The strokes have also been reported in some people who had COVID 19. 
with the symptoms related to face, arm, speech, and type. Each one side of the person's face numbed or dropping. Then this is a very critical situation. Then each one arm weak or numb if they try to raise both arms. Does one arm sag? Can they speak clearly? Ask them to repeat a sentence. Even minutes should be counted when someone shows signs of the stroke. If you are infected, symptoms can show up in as few as two days or as many as 14 days. Also, more days are also required for some cases. According to researchers in China, these are the most common symptoms among the people who had COVID-19. 99% cases the fever, 70% cases fatigue, and 59% cases cough. Lack of appetite in 40%, in 35% cases the body aches and softness of the 31, and others. How do I know if it's COVID-19, a cold, or a flu? Actually, it is a confusing situation because just to see the comparative tables, the cold, flu, allergy, and COVID-19, most are very similar. But symptoms of COVID-19 can be similar to a bad cold. You can say that a bad cold or the flu. So, your doctor will suspect COVID-19, but report that you have a fever, a cough, or your life in an area with the virus, or have traveled to the places where it was said. Coronavirus risk factors. Anyone can get COVID-19. And most infections are usually mild. This is the this is the one positive sign. Especially children and young adults. But if you are not in an area where COVID-19 is spreading, have not traveled from an area where it's spreading, or have not been in contact with the someone who has it. your risk of infection is low. So we have to depend upon the non-pharmaceutical intervention first. People over 65 are most likely to get a serious illness. Obviously, as they are uh, nursing homes or long-term care facilities, they are having with the blood pressure problem, heart disease, lung disease. So many health complications are there due to old age. Some children and teens who are in the hospital with COVID-19 have an inflammatory conditions and that are calling multi-system inflammatory syndrome in children or MIS. And doctors think it may be linked to the virus and in case it causes symptoms similar to this of toxic shock and Kawasaki disease, a condition that causes inflammation in the kids' blood vessels. In transmission regarding coronavirus, mainly spread from person to person. Most of the time it spreads when sick person coughs. They can spray droplets as far as six feet away. If you breathe them in a shallow, then the virus can get into your body. Some people who have the virus do not have symptoms, but they can still spread the virus. You can also get the virus from touching the surface of our object. The virus is on, then touching your mouth, nose, or possibly your eyes. Most viruses can live for several hours on a surface. 
that the land on. The study showed that the SARS coronavirus 2 can last for several hours in various types of surfaces like 4 hours in buffer, 24 hours in cargo, and 2 to 3 days on plastic or stainless steel. That's why it is important to disinfect surfaces to get rid of the virus. Some dogs and cats have tested positive for the virus. A few have some signs of illness, but there's no evidence that humans can catch this coronavirus from an animal. Community spread when we don't know the surface, the source of, of infection. When COVID-19, usually the first to someone who gets the virus, even though they have not or have not been exposed to someone who traveled abroad or who had COVID-19. In February 2020, the CDC confirmed a COVID-19 infection in California in a person who had not traveled to any affected areas or been exposed to someone with the disease. This marked the first instance of community spread in the USA. If you see the spreading trajectory, as of today, there have been 7.64 million confirmed cases of COVID-19, including 40 to lakh, four lakh twenty-five thousand three hundred eighty-five days, and it spreads two hundred sixteen countries, and as well as the transmission rate between two to two point five others. If you see the Maharashtra, which is the more dangerous position, and Delhi also in the same way and the figure of the West Bengal is also like that. Coronavirus Coronavirus and COVID-19 strains it's normal for a virus to change because it is very much mutated. As well as positive front RNA virus, and it infects people. The Chinese study of 103 COVID-19 cases suggests the virus that causes it has done just that, and they found two strains. And S type is older, and L type was more common. How long will the coronavirus last? It is a big question. It's too soon to tell how long the pandemic will continue. And it depends upon the vaccine, it depends upon the antiviral drugs, as well as it depends upon non-pharmaceutical intervention, like isolation, quarantine, good personal hygiene, use of disinfectant, and limitation of public gathering. Can coronavirus be transmitted for groceries? This is a big question for today. And you are much more likely to get coronavirus or corona COVID-19 from another person than from packages, groceries, or food. But you are in a high risk group, stay home, and use a delivery service. Help them leave the item outside your front door if you can. If you do your own shopping, try to stay at least six feet away from other shoppers. That is really impossible. 
because you try to maintain a safe distance. But other people, the common people, they don't know how this micro or virus is dangerous for us. So always wear a mask. Face covering. If you think about the diagnosis, the PCR or active PCR testing is the main one. You can uh, the doctors can collect the swab from your nose or the back of your throat, the spirit fluid from your lower respiratory tract. and take a saliva or stool sample. The asymptomatic person, this is now a critical situation, how we handle the use for test facility, WHO during the COVID-19 Gen C real virus 2. You can see the wanted with the picture, not the tables. You write the every in your hands often take room over and try to wear that every part of things is under the box seminar here then regarding the hydroxychloroquine malaria studies on their use and several studies that we teach was being let doctors use of time the researcher in the ed cover from the beginning are also an anti viral success of this hospital use of that and recovered to convalescent fly everybody or every community slowly as well as Recovery word to utilize each. There are constantly tracking the recovery that should have information updating and see the previous of them. So currently in India it is get the coronavirus twice. But you have had old, you have a three out of the SPR unit, but that goes away over time. And you see in the earlier slide, so many viruses are there and so many secondary infections are there. So it is very difficult to say whether it is come back or not. Stay home or stay safe. Maintain, this is my personal take home message. Maintain a diary to record three things. What the environmental changes are going on, starting from the environmental temperature to all the altered conditions of the environment. And your food habit as well as body conditions. This triangle help us to survive. And before concluding, I must thank the organizer, the principal of the college, as well as the entire team of Dr. Ganguly and giving me the opportunity to share a few words with the large participants, starting from the students to scientists. Thank you, Dr. Hatta. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your nice presentation. It is now over to you, Ashish Babu. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mahapatro. Uh, we are very much uh, sorry to say that uh, due to certain unavoidable uh, circumstances, we missed you uh, at the previous, uh, previous time. And sometimes uh, the uh, sound of your uh, lecture was uh, to some extent uh, not audible. Okay, everything is okay. We have uh, we have gone through your uh, lecture, and uh, we have as well as we have lost some time. So uh, little questions are there, and that questions will be uh, provided by our uh, Aringam Ganguly, Doctor Ganguly, please. Sir, uh, there is a few. There are a few questions from the audience. Uh, Shalini Das has asked that. When a person got recovery from COVID-19, it is often been uh, said that uh, uh, he has developed IgG and IG, IgG and IgG and IgM antibodies in his body. So why there is a chance of recurrence of the disease in next time? Something wrong again.
Hello. Pradeepuru, please click on stop presenting. viral infections they followed the three parts one is the latent infection the virus also in a different modification form so there is a we cannot say that it is completely cured or there for further contamination or further infection hello hello any question dr ganguly is there any question there is a, there is a common query sir okay thank you there is a common query that will the covid 19 last as a common respiratory diseases Okay, uh, okay. I think we sh we should move on to the uh, next uh, lecture presentation. Hello. Okay. Hello, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor Mohapatra. Uh, There are something wrong Hello. again in the uh, activity. Activity. Hello. So let us uh, finish the first uh, presentation. Let's just now. Now uh, the second uh, our eminent. Uh, speakers i am inviting our second speakers doctor second speaker doctor keshav chandra mondal professor doctor keshav chandra mondal now are you um, please be ready and uh, start uh, your uh, presentation okay uh, before presentation before presenting uh, i i have to request doctor ganguly uh, to introduce him Yes. Thank you, sir. Uh, Professor Keshav Chandra Mondal is a human physiology graduate from Mindapur College and PhD in applied microbiology from Vidyasagar University, West Bengal, India. He was awarded Chancellor's Gold Medal for scoring the highest rank in MSc examination in the university in 1991. Since last 23 years, he is serving. as the faculty of raja enel khan women's college and then to the microbiology department of vidyasagar university in various capacities he is a renowned academician and scientist in the area of microbial enzyme gut flora probiotics and fermented foods his research effort have been focused on understanding the diversity of intestinal bacteria particularly during environmental stress the nutrient components microbial diversity and enzymes in traditional fermented foods is also his research field he is developing functional foods having anti obesity and anti toxic potentialities by using probiotic bacteria and yeast from traditional fermented foods he is handling numbers of research projects projects sponsored by ugc dbt csir dst state government and has published more than 140 scientific papers five review 13 book chapters and one text proof from crc press he has guided more than 100 dissertation projects for mphil students and produced 16 phd students and presently five students are pursuing phd under his guidance he is the recipient of indo hungarian fellowship in 2014 and tempus public foundation fellowship hungary for the year 2015 
2015 to 16. He is a life member of several professional bodies like Asian Federation of Biotechnology AP, Indian Science Congress Association, ISCA, Biotech Research Society of India, BRSI, Indian National Academy of Stress Science, INASS, Association of Microbiologists of India, and Physiological Society of India, PSI. He has widely traveled in Europe and many other countries and has delivered lead talks in many conferences and has organized several conferences and workshops. He is a regular reviewer for manuscripts of several reputed Indian and international journals. Now, may I request Dr. Keshav Chandra Mondal to say a few words on the COVID-19 and give his valuable presentation. First, unmute yourself, sir. Sir, please unmute. Dr. Mandal, go to the slide, go to the taskbar below, go to the slide. Yes, sir. And then, yes, sir. Fine. No, it is, it, it, he has not unmuted. He's still mute. Dr. Mandal, Please unmute. Shall we, sir, red button? Yes, yes, sir. You, you can unplug your earphone also. If it, if it is not working, you can unplug your earphone. It is not working, sir. So please unplug your earphone. It's lost from the computer. Sort of what I feel is first it to be unmuted, then go to the presentation slide. Yes, yes. Now it is. Um, Thank you, everyone. Your person of this session. Dr. Mondal, am I audible to you? Dr. Mondal. So please unmute yourself.
We are not getting any sound from your side. Dr. Mondal. Dr. Mandel will soon join us. The connectivity is not something and being us uh, very much depressed. Uh, <laughs> Everything is okay, but where is the connectivity? If we are going to the presentation slide, we need to unmute us. Then if we go to the presentation slide, then it will be audible and visible. that has joined us. Okay, so from the model, uh, we cannot hear you, though it is unmuted, but still we, can, we can't hear you. Sir, your earphone is not connected with the system. Please, you can go without earphone also. Dr. Mondal, yes, sir. First, unmute yourself. Go to the Meet uh, tab, Google Meet tab, and unmute yourself first. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, okay, okay. sir. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, please start, sir. So, 
थैंक यू अगेन ऑल ऑफ यू सो इन कंटिन्यूस विद माय प्रीवियस स्पीकर एंड दे हैव गिवन लॉट ऑफ एम्फेसिस इन द स्ट्रक्चर एज वेल एज डिफरेंट एस्पेक्ट ऑफ द कोरोना वायरस टुडे आई विल डिलीवर अ लेक्चर ऑन द पोस्ट कोरोना इंटरेक्शन it is well known that this novel virus is closely similar with the sars as well as mars but its functional aspect functional aspect is quite somehow unique in respect to the other organism if you consider its incubation period it is sharply rise and within one and one and half week but in case of mars it is quite delayed at the same time fatality rate mortality rate is very less in case of covid than the sars or mars and that is due to some sort of mutation i will discuss later half in my presentation and it is oil mention that it is the type of beta corona virus it has major four structural protein and around 16 non structural protein and its genome around 30 kb and the major sequence is like that prime prime leader utr replicates structural genes and next three prime poly a utr this is the overall genome size genome uh, orientation of the this novel corona virus and this slide indicate the location of the specific genes and the gene product and among the important gene product like papain like protease replicase or it is called rna dependent rna polymerase helicase endoribonuclease and spike protein besides the other non structural proteins if you compare with the sars mars its s protein that means spike is the important mediator for the attachment in the spike particularly there are 27 amino acid substitution happen in the in this novel cob so thing is like that in in comparison to mars only within the sp uh, spike protein there are alteration of 27 number of amino acid among the 27 number of amino acid which are very crucial for its pathogenicity and binding and spreading six are remain in the receptor binding domain and another six are remain in the sub domain part and interestingly there is an unusual furin like cleavage furin like sar cleavage that remain in the receptor binding site okay and scientist or focus that identified that this sort of this sort of variability actually are the major thing major uh, Um, major uh, uh, characteristics behind its high rate of transmittance but lethality is very low compared to mars or sars and its so called membrane protein envelope protein and nuclear protein are all are more or less comparable to the sars or mars 
particularly its envelope protein is related to its pathogenesis assembling and release of virus okay and in case of non structural protein there are around 16 number of non structural protein are synthesized by the viral genome which are primarily related with the viral re replication primarily related with the viral re replication besides its genome encoded polyprotein which subsequently cleaved fragmented into different type of protease like chymotrypsin like protease papain like protease and another related enzyme is the hemagglutinin esterase these are all participate in the different phase of its life cycle and it has also rna dependent rna polymerase rdrp essential for its replication if you compared with the sars and mars in total there are variation of 380 number of amino acid 380 number of amino acids and this variation make it novel make it more transmissible than the sars and mars okay and this is the overall structure and it is well known that angiotensin converting enzyme is the its receptor for the spike protein but before the attachment this spike protein are somehow modulated by the host enzyme host protease transmembrane protease serin 2 this is also called tm tr ss2 transmembrane protease serin 2 these are modified the sam segment in the junction of s1 s2 segment of the spike protein and whenever this sort of modification happen then can only this virus able to attach with the its specific receptor so for its binding not only the angiotensin converting enzyme 2 ac2 is responsible simultaneously for the ligand modification for the ligand modification another important host transmembrane enzyme important that is the transmembrane protease serin 2 and this are the now target for the these both receptor as well as this transmembrane protein are now the target for the therapeutic measure for uh, therapeutic prevention these are now target and interestingly this slide shows the expression of acetylcholine receptor in different parts of the body it is well expressed in different parts most are concentrated on the lungs as because lungs within the lungs the expression of the expression of this uh, receptor is much more and due to airway transmission lungs is the most susceptible organ but besides other organ also susceptible as because angiotensin converting enzyme 2 receptor is distributed in the intestine in the liver kidney brain as well as different vasculature different blood vessel so due to distribution of this type of receptor virus whenever it comes uh, turn into the systematic composition that is turn into the blood stream come into the blood stream then it can hamper different multi organ okay and it is already mentioned that its life cycle it is the positive strand rna virus therefore it fastly produced protein and thereafter 
it for and it very fast completed its life cycle within the cell therefore in my second slide what i mentioned that its cycle life cycle peak reach within 4 to 5 days and then gradually decline and then symptomatic reaction happen that leads to prognosis of different diseases and now i am discussing giving emphasis on its pathogenesis pneumocyte one of the interesting columnar epithelium within the lungs is primarily affected primarily affected and this parenchymal cell inflamed inflamed as a result it causes is and it also under the action of cytopathic effect of the virus what i what we find in patient diffuse alveolar damage diffuse alveolar damage i will show in my next slide cellular fibromyxoid extruded hyaline membrane formation disquamation and all are very related to the acute respiratory distress syndrome and whenever virus infected the pneumocyte to combat the new the virus particle different blood cells also infiltrate into the tissue so the cytopathic effect that initiated by the virus that can again facilitated by the infil infiltration of the different blood cells okay and as a result common result is the cough severe respiratory problem apart from the other symptom like fever fatigue headache even diarrhea these are the common symptom that mostly mediated by the this virus and this picture showed the structure of the pneumocyte so huge number of virus particles are synthesized and it loses the total histo architecture of the alveolar cell it simply it damaged the alveolar cell and ct scan revealed the patches numerous patches numerous patches surrounding the lungs so major target organ is the lungs it is loose tissue and pneumocytes are primarily affected to combat the virus different blood cell reach at the site of infection as a result profound inflammation happened within the lungs and that restrict the airway resistance and due to this sort of inflammation the, the resistant clearing agent so called surfactant its concentration gradually decline so the airway resistance with less less is due to the is due to multifactorial action effect not only the immuno uh, pneumocytes besides surfactant different epithelial barrier system are also damaged as a result 
air circulation, air flowing is limited. And in the COVID patient, one of the common symptoms is the lymphocytopenia. That means lymphocyte count sharply declined. What is the cause of the lymphocyte count? Listening, I will discuss later. And imbalanced network of immune response. On the other hand, inflammatory response exaggerated. If you see the systemic condition, leukocytosis, leukopenia, hypoalbuminia, and on the other hand, so-called stress-related enzymes, antioxidant-related enzymes, their marker level also increase, like increased lactic, de lactic dehydrogenase, aspartate transaminase, and because it is multi-organ effect. And in this context, pregnant women having the high risks, this virus can be adversely affect the fetus also. Next come into the immunity. In consequence, in my earlier word, due to infection of the this COVID-2, our first line defense, innate immune defense, it is dysregulated. In innate immune system, two responsible receptor which receptor for the virus which remain in the cytosol as well as endosome are the rig one and toll like receptor they can they can activated by the specific ligand of the virus molecular pattern of the virus particularly toll-like receptor C can be activated by the double strand RNA, toll-like receptor 7 and 8, they activated by the single strand RNA. Similarly, cytosolic rig, which is called RLR, that can also detect the virus. What thing happened? This recognizing system of the host, this recognizing system of the host somehow suppressed their function. And this is due to shedding by the virus particle. So, in simple word, our innate, innate immune system, which unable to recognize the virus particle due to own action of the virus. On the other hand, which is commonly called cytokine shock, a large number of pro-inflammatory cytokines like DNA alpha, IL-1 beta, IL-6 and IL-18 their concentration reach in high level. And this cytokine shock not only confined within the, within the lungs, that also hampered the other tissue also. And this cytokine shock also important factor for suppression of the T-cell function. Besides, so viral clearing agent, NK cell, their concentration also declined. On 
one of the important mediator for virus killing is the interferon this is the principal antiviral cytokine mediator its concentration also decreases therefore just you imagine total innate immune system against the virus somehow dysregulated its recognizing system is somehow suppressed on the other hand direct viral killing mediator interferon its concentration also decreased and covid escape the innate immune system what i mentioned earlier also the double stranded rna they seeded the membrane bound they seeded by the membrane bound compartment itself remain itself hidden within the membrane therefore the receptor unable to recognize the rna molecule similarly another modification also happen that minimize the activity of rlr that is the guanosine capping at the high prime end and these two effects these two alteration happen in such a way that both toll like receptor and rll receptor unable to sense the virus okay and if you look the coordinating mechanism among the different blood cell responsible for the responsible for the our immune system their function some are altered most are towards the immunosuppression stage in case cell which are the virus killer its concentration decline on the other hand interferon its concentration decline t cell function that also decreased and due to complement action phagocytic interaction also somehow disturbed as a result profound inflammatory reaction happened that is related with the recruitment of different blood cell at the site of infection i mentioned earlier that infiltration infiltration of the blood cell at the site of infection and liberation of different cytokines as a result inflammatory reaction initiated and come into the higher multitude and if you see in case of adaptive immune response where t cell which are we recognize is the master cell their quantity decrease reduced both t cd4 and cd8 cells and therefore their ability they can help for antibody production they can activate the cytotoxic lymphocyte for antiviral activity both are altered and this is due to direct infection of the virus to the t cell number 1 number 2 higher level of pro inflammatory cytokines these are the two factor by which the quantity of t lymphocyte reduced one interesting question asked to dr dasma patru that why body unable to develop the memory as because due to t cell inactivation our humoral response is short lived 
unable to produce much number of memory cell if you see blue color indicated the number of viral load load red color igm and igg their quantity decrease after after certain duration not form strong memory and this is due to somehow suppress function of the t cell so thing is like that both innate immune system as well as adaptive immune system somehow dysregulated not we use the term suppress this regulated means inflammatory mediator secret in higher concentration exaggerated whereas t cell function suppress and therefore produce short lived memory cell next trading events it is well known well characterized that this covid is the zoonotic reach from the bats and through droplet or physical and that reach to the next to human that can transmit to the other individual human to human transmission that can be mediated by droplets direct contact or contaminated materials and it remain in the systemic condition within the blood and that can affect the fetus also so there is a great link with the other animal advanced bioinformatic tools clearly demonstrated the origin of this virus is from the bats and that may propagate to pangolin or this type of animal aphids next modern therapeutics that targeted at the four site first a is the site for the rna dependent rna polymerase this is the site many inhibitor are now using besides protease inhibitor or anti fusion inhibitor are also used to target to minimize the viral replication second target second target is the chloroquine or hydroxy chloroquine these are actually increase the ph of the cell increase ph of the cell therefore restrict the endolysosomal pathway restrict the activity of endolysosomal pathway that means formation of the again structure formation of the structure and release part of the virus this is the target for the second type of therapeutics third is the c indicated the il6 is the important and major interleukin related to the inflammatory cascades and macrophage group of cells are the major cells liberated il6 third target is towards the inhibition of synthesis of granulocyte macrophage colony stimulating factor so therefore whenever the synthesis of this granulist granul uh, granulocyte macrophage colony stimulating factor as well as il6 is inhibited then inflammatory mediated will be minimized and fourth is the fourth target is the potential antibody potential antibody preferably monoclonal antibody that can protect the 
growth and multiplication of the covid virus so this through antibody mediated therapeutics so by this way these are the strategy by these four strategy so called physician are trying to combat the this covid like virus in my concluding remarks one of the in my in our community we found the asymptotic asymptotic patients number of asymptotic patients are increasing these will be one of the so called reservoir for further transmission of the disease government as well as our system should be screen fast very fast to identified this sort of infection as we have the idea that lysogenic to lytic cycle that can be converted at any instance similarly latent virus to pathogenic one that is also related to the fact so this asymptotic infection can be easily converted into the symptomatic one therefore it is urgent to restrict their movement restricting their virus transmittency to the surrounding community second is that so called home stay this is based on the life cycle of the virus i mentioned earlier that around 2 week it can complete the life cycle and thing is like that this life cycle if people remain in their own house up to the 14 days so up to the its incubation period so virus transmittency will be minimized home stay or quarantine these are very useful and third very important one human wildlife inter interaction we have the idea all sort of sars mars and even covid 19 all are the zoonotic origin so restic the fresh eating behavior of the human or restic the relationship with the animal even bird also which are the simply people designated these are also the reservoir of the different virus particle so by this simple way by this simple way we can restrict the spread not only the therapeutics simultaneously cut down the spreading mechanism uh, is the another stage another step towards the limiting of the virus propagation by this dual way we are hopeful that we will able to combat the viral propagation thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to deliver this lecture thank you the principal sir as well as organizing secretary as well as other total team of this seminar thank you very much thank you thank you very much sir for your nice presentation it was very much visible yes. and audible yes uh, yes audible yes clearly audible and we uh, very much uh, um, understand your words 
because uh, you have the, uh, you have delivered uh, in an important sector this is the molecular interaction between host and pathogen to establish the disease and you give us uh, hope uh, regarding the the drug designing drug production uh, uh, to virus uh, virus so and you will also uh, have said uh, regarding something uh, the relation between the animal world so i uh, very much thank to you and uh, i ask uh, dr ganguly if there are any question uh, very quick questions because we are running late so please uh, dr ganguly okay sir uh, we have few questions uh, we have student questions from the students that the genetic material of the virus mutates repeated uh, repeatedly so we cannot develop a vaccine right now but is it possible that we can use conserved sequence of genes to combat the mutated one what what uh, during vaccine one principle they generally uh, employed by the people which is the most exposed one so vaccine means to induce immunity so that material must be remain on the surface by which the blood cell can be activated okay so on this principle and this mutation happened on the mostly and due to rapid transmittance at mutation will will be much more in the uh, next time period at due to continuous infection okay therefore people are trying to some constant portion some signature molecule which are always constant and exposed to the blood therefore that seen will be more effective okay sir thank you sir uh, another question from the audience is that can we use nanoparticles to inhibit the i have no idea side? i have no idea okay. i have some <laughs> allergy against the nanoparticle <laughs> Okay, okay. So thank you, sir. Thank you very much for your nice presentation. This informative session will be very much helpful for us, for our faculty, for the students, and for all who all are fighting against COVID nineteen. Okay. So okay. Uh, we are able to start our uh, next lecture from Dr. Vasudev Pandit. Okay. I am welcoming Dr. Vasudev Pandit. Uh, or in the Mr. Dr. Ganguly, please introduce her. Dr. Vasudev Pandit is an associate professor at the National Institute of Biomedical Genomics, Kolkata. She works in the area of genomics of infectious diseases. Her research focus is host genomics of tuberculosis infection, identifying genomic correlates and readout of host that makes the individual susceptible to the disease. She is trained in chemistry and biochemistry from University of Calcutta. and subsequently obtained her phd from saha institute of nuclear physics she did her postdoctoral research at medical university of south carolina and mount sinai school of medicine new york usa working on identification of genes causal mutation and mechanisms for genetic diseases on return she joined national institute of biomedical genomics kolkata where the research focus of the institute is to understand human health and disease using genomic knowledge leading to advancement of genetics based healthcare her publication includes infection genetics evolution tuberculosis journal of proteome and others she serves in the editorial board of journal of genetics now may i request dr vasudev pandit to please deliver her valuable speech okay so uh, is it can you can you see the slides 
I think no. Yeah. No, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, no? go to okay. the top bar and go to the slide. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Huh. Huh. Yeah. Now, now it's okay, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. And at the beginning, I would like to thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity to present some aspects, the genomic aspects of this recent disease, the pandemic outbreak. And uh, even though I do not see uh, Principal Professor Mukherjee, but I would like to also thank him at the beginning because he had given a good introduction to the disease. Now, um, my earlier speakers already have spoken a lot about the disease as well as the pathogen. So I will quickly glance through the introduction. All of you know that this is caused by the infection, the viral infection, novel COV-2. It's not that it, the coronavirus pandemic is first time happening to the mankind. We had earlier episodes and five or six episodes of coronavirus but the severity of the spread was much less that's why we are not that much aware and also the present generation have not seen that other than SARS. This uh, SARS scope started in 2019 end of 2019 and probably from the seafood market where the source could be the different animals. Now the SARS virus and the Mars causing virus they are the siblings of this SARS-CoV-2. Bat is a natural reservoir for many viruses and it also harbors the SARS-CoV as well. From bat, possibly it went to pangolin as well. Uh, I'll come to little uh, details or the evidence for such uh, comment. But this SARS-CoV-2 virus has low mutation rate. But the fearing factor is that it has high human-to-human -human transmissibility. That means it can easily transmit from one person to another. And the other uh, concerning thing is that we have been never exposed to this SARS-CoV-2. Therefore, this is like we are having a new enemy. So with uh, against which our immunity has never seen that or has never fought back for that. So that is the only concern that we have. This is also mentioned my, by my previous uh, speakers that it's a positive strand RNA virus with the genome being 29 to 30 KB. So it has RNA as its genome and it codes many proteins, many of which are polypept uh, coded as a single from the single polypeptides or single uh, uh, kind cystronic kind of thing. That's why you might see that there is variation in the number. But anyway, now. Uh, one concept I would like to give to all of you is that we know that for an infectious disease, pathogen is necessary. Without pathogen, we cannot have an infectious disease. We do not call it an infectious disease. But is the pathogen sufficient? It's necessary, but it's not the sufficient thing. So the other factors that come into play is the host and the environment. So even if you are exposed with the pathogen, you may not have the disease. So what controls here? It, it is known now that with a lot of studies and unequivocally proof that the host factors, the host genomics and the genomics which control these factors and controls the regulate and regulates these factors are one of the important aspects for a uh, infectious disease to, <clears throat> uh, to establish or the pathogen to establish it inside the host. Besides that, there are environmental factors too. Now, what are these environmental factors? It's very complicated to decide upon the effect of these factors, but factors like, say, nutrition, good health condition, good environment, these also have role in protection of the disease from uh, or protection of an individual from the pathogen. Now, not only the single pathogen, but sometimes along with the real pathogen, there exist other microbes. Like say for tuberculosis, HIV is another factor that adds on or that, uh, or that uh, makes a person more vulnerable to the disease. Similarly, in case of COVID also, we see that people are interested to look into other lung infection like say TB infection, etc. And how 
both the pathogens where, which both residing in the lungs and how do they communicate among themselves as well as the host so this brings all the complications to the situation and it's really a complex situation to understand the pathogenesis of an infectious disease because it's a combination of not only the one genome not the host but it's a com complement interaction between the host and the pathogen as well where the environmental factors are aiding or is in against the pathogenesis now coming uh, to covid 19 you know that it's mostly spreading to, through the droplets uh, through breath coming out of an infected person but it can also it's highly contagious therefore if the pathogen is on your hand on door handle etc other places also and if you touch those places and then your nose or your mouth that can go through so not only the infected person but the surrounding can also to some extent um, has role in spreading therefore we have to remain very cautious but when somebody is exposed to this pathogen it is not that everybody has the disease in other infectious disease it has been seen that some percentage of people are able to clear the infection for covid 19 right now we do not know what percentage of people can clear the infection without showing any symptoms but we know that whoever is exposed can lead to two fates one is the asymptomatic condition where the person doesn't show any infection uh, or signs of infection or disease but the other person who develops active disease after the latency period say 4 to 14 days whatever depending on the health situation of the person so the concern is the asymptomatic person because you do not know whether they harbor the pathogen or not whereas the active person we know that he has the disease we can remain uh, cautious that we should not come in direct contact with the person or come in contact with the person with proper precautions now among the active patients also there is different grade of severity some have mild symptoms some do well but at the uh, suddenly at certain condition their health condition deteriorates and there are some other uh, factors as well different persons or different phenotypes some show lower um, lymphocytes called lymphocytopenia some show other features other complications like clotting of blood etc so we see that in this disease there is a high range high spectrum of uh, a high spectrum of the phenotypes or the severity now what actually determines this let us see how it is balanced so the pathogen several factors from the pathogen side contribute like the strain variation so this i'm talking in general about any infectious disease so the strain if it is more virulent that causes more severity the pathogen load is of course another factor more load we expect that it will cause more havoc in the host and also the gene expression of the pathogen that means in that hostile host inside that hostile host the the host is actually not in very much favor of the pathogen the pathogen has to fight a lot to establish itself inside the host so the host gene expression other either in its latent condition where it is hiding and trying to take over the host or if it is an active disease where the pathogen is already in a winning situation so the set of gene expression might be different and that's the strategy of the pathogen to establish itself whereas in the host site we can see that there are several factors the cellular responses the cellular cytokine releases are major factors that control the initial innate immunity uh, that controls the pathogen and all these responses all uh, either the cellular response the cytokine response or other uh, cellular functions these are controlled by the genetic variation of the host so that we know that we all do not respond to an infectious disease equally so what why that is if there are 10 persons exposed to cold infection one might develop severe severe cold in the next day whereas the nine other person might develop the severity in next five days and maybe another two three or four person never develop it 
so why does it happen so this is one of the factor the inter interlying uh, genetic variation of the host that determines how strong is the immunity of a person and how can it combat the infection so the balance between these factors coming out of the pathogen as well as the host determines who will win the pathogen or the host so now coming to how genomics will help us to understand the disease so genomics can help us to understand the transmission the origin of the disease like in this case covid we know that it originated from wuhan and the first few person isolate have been taken from those patients and the genomic analysis has been done their rna the genome has been sequenced so we know that, and then we as it progressed our spread throughout the world we are tracking the scientific community is tracking the changes and how it is transmitted or how it is attaining the virulence so the mutation comes there so the virus has changed its uh, genome in multiple places and when a pathogen jumps from one species to another the cross species evolution like it has happened here also that from bat maybe through pangolin or directly to human being it has come so might be that the pathogen has evolved in such of uh, some of its uh, nucleotides in the genome to best uh, ma make it home the environment inside the host best for it okay also that leads to adaptation because the pathogen has to adapt in the new environment so certain changes in the nucleotides may help it or in some cases it has been seen that that does not help it so the pathogen in the new hostile environment cannot survive and also with this large genomic information the rna genome of the virus has helped to construct the phylogeny and how from one place to another while the virus is transmitting how they are changing this uh, scale or the phylogeny tree has helped us to understand that after a while whether the virus still existing or infecting in the united states is same or different from the one that had originated in china so the first whole genome sequence was for this sars cov 2 was done uh, from yuhan the taken from the patients and it was published in january 5th 2020 all these genome informations there is a common platform where one can deposit and it is shared by the whole scientific community that's called the global initiative on sharing all influenza data or gset till now till today more than 46000 viral genome across the globe has been deposited there and country wise the phenotype wise and different parameters are there with which you can identify or go into that site and uh, retrieve the sequence that you are interested now how let me uh, particularly for the students let me tell how this from the dna sequence or rna sequence how this phylogenetic tree are constructed just look into the picture say this different colored balls are the different nucleotides you can see that the blue is pretty common it's present across multiple uh, multiple clinical isolates of the virus so we conclude that this is something original which was present earlier and it is still carried by the virus so on the right hand side you see that the blue is at the origin of this phylogenetic tree now we see that some other other color codes have come into play the yellow ones and the red ones so the yellow are present in some of them the red are present in some of them which suggests that from the blue possibly it has diverged into two groups the yellow and the red now comes the other points other colors and as the color comes in multiple colors we see that they are diverging they are branching so this way from the genome sequence of the virus we can construct their phylogenetic tree okay now as i uh, said earlier that i'll come to the point of the pangolin see this paper has uh, constructed the phylogenetic information uh, taking from the sars cov 2 as well as bat and pangolin 
So these pangolins were taken from, you can see that GX is one sequence, GD. So GX and GD are the two different places in China, uh, Guangdong and Guangxing or something. So two different provinces. And not that all pangolins harbor the same virus. See that GX virus uh, pangolins are uh, GX pangolin virus are little distance from the GD1. So when compared and uh, the phylogenetic analysis one was done, the SARS-CoV-2 genome were more close to the bat, and next closest was the GD pangolin rather than the GX pangolin. And the bat doesn't harbor only one type of SARS; it can harbor different types, which are even distant from the SARS-CoV-2 or the bat mentioned here. So you can see, easily understand that one type of bat harbor this, uh, this virus and this virus is the closest or this virus has evolved to the SARS-CoV-2 which is infecting the humans. Okay, this picture I, am take, I have taken from the GZ database. Uh, it shows the phylogenetic clustering of all the information sequence information they have have on their sites and uh, even though 46000 information is deposit uh, clinical isolate genome sequence is deposited there but uh, as of today 12 no as of 12 june they have constructed these haplotypes or the uh, phylogenetics uh, considering 39000 full genome sequence these are the different groups slv GH and there is an other group. This is this picture is evolving day by day as they get more and more sequence information. The origin which came from Yuhan had SLL and from there with time as it progressed, the other uh, clades has appeared. You can also see in this picture that in December there was the gray and very less O. O is the other. Now, S and L was here, the two shades of gray. But as time progressed, you see appearance of, dif uh, of the different other clades, the V, G, G8, GR, etc. So as time is progressing, the virus is changing its nucleotide. But that doesn't mean that it's a different strain. It is just the same strain with different nucleotides at different position, evolving in different countries. So what was the Indian scenario? The first. <coughs> Sorry. The first case was reported in Kerala in January 2020 uh, among students who came back from the China and uh, subsequently their contacts became infected as well as in other states of India, contacts from Europe or other countries as well as China and subsequently their family contacts, friends, etc. spread the disease. Now we did a little bit analysis on the viral genome taking Indian patients or the sequence of the clinical isolates that have been submitted to this GZ. And let me explain. Uh, so till May 18th, we got 3, 000, uh, 304 genome for analysis and that belonged to possibly 16 states of India. So we clearly see that there are two groups these circles actually denote each of these circle denotes a clade and these two are major the different color defines the different state and here this small circle is the original one you can see if it is i'm not sure whether it's visible you can see there are three colors the white black and the uh, pink which black here this is the bla uh, black dot it refer it refers to the sequence of the yuhan clinical isolate, the black, then the white is from the state of Kerala and the pink is from the state of Telangana. So this was the original sequence that was uh, found in the clinical isolates in the India. Either people came back from China mostly or other uh, places uh, in abroad. And from there, then when it infected other uh, people in the country, so there are changes. So one we denoted here LV. If you remember in the previous slide, I showed there is L strain, L clade, sorry, not strain. And we, in our analysis with the Indian isolates, we de uh, designated this as LV because it had a new change other than 
whatever is mentioned let me go back to the other uh, the previous uh, sorry the previous slide actually here it's very small you cannot see possibly but if you go to the gset database you can see that the s means what are the changes in the nucleotide or protein it is mentioned here so apart from these changes in the uh, lv we found another change a 97v which was in the polymerase protein this sequence the change has been reported by multiple uh, states when they had sequenced the clinical isolates so these two major strains were found among the clinical isolates from india the lv and g and then from g there were different other things like gr gh etc was present now this g group was mostly predominant in the isolates in gujarat whereas the four states bengal maharashtra madhya pradesh and um, gujarat where the mortality rate is high we found that the g clade was more present in these states now uh, this was supported by one evidence from one report from sheffield where they also reported that high mortality rate was found in the person who are infected with the g clades right now we are increasing our samples now right now more than uh, 7000 indian isolate sequence is available and we are trying to see whether this still holds good in the when we replenish this with more number of sequences so our frequency when we analyze the genome of this 304 isolates there were multiple variants which were in very low frequency but high in number so we neglected the frequency the variants which were less than 1% and we find that these are the different type changes that we see the c to t uh, changes were the most common and when we looked into the amino acids the most uh, frequently uh, changed proteins were was the nsp3 and the s protein now coming to the uh, comparison uh, even though this table is shown in a different orientation but i would like to focus your attention only to these two tables which are written in a proper way it will be easy for you to understand that here we have made a comparison with the clinical isolates the changes what we see compared to the rat and the pangolin and we see that the gray boxes are the showing the changes that changes have occurred from rat or pangolin to the human except two uh, sorry three shown here in yellow boxes where the change is either in the rat uh, uh, sorry the bat or the pangolin it is not that both the, the changes are present in <clears throat> bat as well pang as well as pangolin now people have also looked into intra host variability what they have done they have sequenced the clinical isolate taken from the same patient multiple times like here i mentioned one reference where they have sequence or sample 32 times from eight patient and they see changes when they go later part of the time so out of 40 such changes 30 changes were from the single patient and the 10 changes were present at least two patients and they had sample from the respiratory tract as well as the gastrointestinal tract and it was found that more di viral diversity was present in the gastrointestinal tract so we see that even though uh, you are infected with some virus the virus goes to multiple organ and their adaptability and their change in the genome might be different which also happens with increase of time the most uh, discussed protein of the pathogen is the spike protein because that's the anchoring point of the pathogen to the host and the spike protein has some critical region which is the rbd which binds to the host receptor now some amino acids are very critical here so if there is change in this amino acids like one example is d614g so the change of course from the point of evolution should help sorry the pathogen to bind more strongly to the host so that it can invade the host so the mutation in these regions are also critical therefore sequencing from the sequence information we can find out whether which region is hypermutable in the virus 
taking or making the virus in and taking it to an advantageous position in the host. So, so far we, I was discussing about the pathogen. Now let us come to the host genomics. And the question is why, how does it help? So it will, knowing host genomics will help us to know how the host will respond to infection. As I mentioned earlier, that there is variability in the response. Not that all hosts respond to the drug in a similar way. You, from your daily experience, you can find out that some, for some people, low, low dose of drug is effective, whereas some people, high drug, high dose of drug is required. So from host, we can also discover a biomarker of the host, and that can be taken to a point of care test for detection. As uh, an example, I can mention that the bio, uh, the uh, antibody people are looking for in the plasma. So detection of antibody or detection of these kind of molecules in the host can be used for a point of care test. And also we can characterize the latent period in the of the pathogen. Most of uh, pathogens when infect, they, the, the host goes through a latency period. And also we can understand the evolution history of the pathogen inside the host. So, so as I mentioned that even though there are different viral loads, the patient can be still asymptomatic or mild symptoms. And but the person, even though it's mild symptomatic or asymptomatic, has the potential to transmit. So that is dangerous. Therefore, to identify these individuals is extremely necessary. And of course, I mentioned that there is high inter-individual variation in the symptoms as well as severity. So coming to back to the same slide again, just I want to mention that therefore, uh, uh, genomic study is necessary to identify the factors why these individuals show different symptoms. And apart from that, also, you know that there are some comorbid factors like somebody with lung or uh, heart ailments that leads to that adds on that adds on fuel to the severity of the disease. So one readout of COVID-19 as well is the cytokines. Uh, what are cytokines? They are small protein or peptides that is secreted out by mostly by immune cells if, with few exceptions and they participate in the immune process. So when there is infection, these cytokines are secreted by the cells and that triggers immune subsequent immune reaction in the downstream events. So they are basically intracellular signaling and cell communicating. So, so you might have come across the term cytokine storm. It's happening in the COVID patient. What is that? It's loss of the control uh, how the host would behave by secreting these pro-inflammatory cytokines. Now, the pro-inflammatory cytokines is for there, the secreted by the host cells to kill the or control the pathogen. But if it is uncontrolled, that is detrimental for the host as well. It could be detrimental uh, if because they circulate through blood throughout the body, it could be detrimental at the local level where they are secreted or it can attack the other organs. And in most of these um, severe respiratory uh, COVID patient with severe respiratory distress, we see that there is high cytokine storm with multiple organ failure. So uh, when these pro-inflammatory cytokines are induced in the body, the anti or the um, cytokines like TH2 group of cytokines are also made, which actually controls or regulates the action of the pro-inflammatory cytokines. But in case of this cytokine storm, possibly that control is lost or less. So here are some cytokine mentioned, uh, which are uh, which are the TH1 or the pro-inflammatory, which is elevated in these patients, as well as there is report of elevations of the TH2 cytokines. Now, drugs can be, uh, because these uh, cytokines are causing severe damage, drugs have been, um, uh, which are already available against these cytokines are in use for the, for the COVID patients. And one, one such example is that HCQ. But we have to also think about that the cytokine profile of these COVID patients is 
really peculiar and we are i mean the scientific community is investigating the details of that so here is a profile uh, picture showing you how it is happening how when the cytokine storm is arising so when there is infection initially with time some pro inflammatory or the inflammatory cytokine is rising and this rise is due to uh, type 1 interferon gamma response and this response subsequently is creating or inducing lot of genes downstream so here it shows the situation of a moderate or mild disease condition but when the disease is severe let us see what's the difference there is a sudden surge of this uh, cytokines which is the cytokine storm there is surge of the viral load and other factors the response type 1 this is severity therefore the patient needs to go to immediate supportive care now coming to uh, the gene expression in the host and how we can relate that to the severity or understand the disease here is one paper that i would want to refer so what they have done they have uh taken data from gene expression database where gene expression for lung and other subset of tissue was available for human non primates as well as mouse and they had compared the gene sets with uh, considering some genes which are the putative sars cov2 targets and they found that gene these genes are mostly not that it's secreted by all cells or made by all cells but some specific type of cells like the type 2 pneumocytes nasal secretory cells and the enterocytes they are active in this disease in the sense that they are making the receptor ace2 and the other new, um, uh, protease which are required or which are actively have been actively characterized in the process of infection of sars cov2 now one difference was there that the mouse ac2 was not upregulated by the interferon but the human let me go yeah let uh, so ac2 is even though the role of ac2 has been long known in the angiotensin uh, renin angiotensin system but it was really surprising that this acts as a receptor for a viral entry as well so it's now known that from this report that it's a interferon stimulated gene that means when interferon is made or induced that activates ac2 so uh, interferon alpha type 1 these are the uh, this is the upstream uh, inducer and in human you can see there is high uh, elevation or induction of this gene ac2 but it is not in mouse so that again leads to a complication that whether the immune response is mouse uh, in mouse is different and can be model mouse for this disease so this is <coughs> another uh, paper which shows that the cytokines mainly the il1 pathway was active this was done from the patient the first few patients from china and uh, it shows that like when their respiratory distress was like at the peak even though the il1 pathway was active throughout but some other uh, pro inflammatory cytokines like il6 etc was high leading to the cytokine storm and with t cell activation so these different cells and the pro inflammatory pathways could be the targets for therapy now as we know that uh, the different person behaves uh, or the response towards the infection is different so in order to understand the role of the host genome multi scale and uh, multi institutional or multi uh, country wide large scale genomic studies have been undertaken and the results are not out but surely we are eagerly waiting for that to understand like which variations in the genome of the host is also playing role in this infection or this susceptibility a few uh, very um, uh, a small study small report i saw on ace2 variants so some of the variants uh, this this data has been taken from 
human genome data where they predict that these variants which are present normally in human could be like good for the human whereas some of them could be bad for the human like predicting the role in terms of their binding affinity to the SARS-CoV protein. But this is just the prediction. It needs to be validated experimentally. And this is the same, same data showing the picture that the different location where these variants are present and, and their putative function as some are directly enhancing the binding or some are, someone directly disrupting the binding. But as I said, this needs to be experimentally validated. So SE2 is an interferon stimulatory gene uh, mostly uh, secreted by the pneumocytes in lung, the ileal enterocytes, and nasal goblet cells. And the gene is located on chromosome X. So how or uh, what does it uh, bring in new information? We know uh, that uh, even though it's an X chromosome, so the males have one set of X chromosomes, where the females have two. But in spite of that, the one X chromosome is inactivated. Therefore, the effective dose or the effective presence is um, similar. Thereby, we do, right now, we do not know the intricate regulation. So we cannot comment on whether males are more, inf uh, uh, more severe or susceptible or the females are. So another piece of information. So as I showed in the earlier slide that there are different variations in this receptor gene of the host. So what people have found that the African descended individuals, 90%, uh, sorry, 9% of the African descended individuals for AC2 may regulate the expression and be related to increased susceptibility in the African American to these infections. So this was a study done in United States. That's why they had mentioned about the African American. So uh, characterization of these genes, the host genes, in a countrywide manner with, will provide us an idea whether we can predict any differential susceptibility of people from different countries. Like we see in the Southeast Asia and Asia, even though the infection is high, but the mortality rate is low. So is there any difference? Is there any genetic or genomic difference among the people from one country to other? That's a question. So I'm almost to the end of my talk. Now, how? Uh, so this is the first stage we are at, and we are understanding the with help of genomics and sequencing. Now, how can that also help if a second wave comes? Now we are know the enemy. We are very familiar with that using these genomic tools. So in the, if there is any outbreak, we can shorten that outbreak. We have diagnosis. We have um, uh, the vaccines and other things are coming up. We will have soon the genomic information of the host and more and more about the pathogen. So if the next phase comes, now we are ready and we are geared up to fight to, for this infection. So this is overall uh, what I wanted to uh, talk about the host genome. And one more interesting factor is the microbiome. So microbiome is the collection of microbiomes, uh, microbes, all sorts of microbiomes in our body. They are organ specific. So the microbiomes differ from one organ to other. And it is well documented that they have some beneficial or adverse effect. So the association of SARS-CoV-2 with microbiome, uh, microbiome, particularly the gut and the lung, will be very interesting to understand the pathogenesis of this, um, um, the SARS-CoV-2 in presence of this natural uh, fauna or flora of our different organs. So this area is very rapidly progressing, and it will be very interesting to understand what is the outcome of this study. Finally, I would like to thank all the participants who have joined this webinar. And I would like to also acknowledge all the source of information that I have used to make this presentation. And uh, my work, uh, that the little piece of work that I discussed with, was done with, along with uh, Dr. Bhattacharya, my colleague in the institute. 
just before ending, I would like to talk a few uh, sentences about my institute because many of you do not know. So this is a institute under uh, Department of Biotechnology, Government of India, located in Kalani. Some pictures of my campus. And just I would like to mention that the PhD program and integrated MSc program advertisement is open. So students, for the students, this is I'm telling. If you are interested, you can go through our website. And our research area is chronic disease, infectious disease, cancer, and the statistical genomics. Our major focus is to understand the signature, genomic signature, transcriptomic signature, and the regulation. So our focus is to use genomics as a tool to understand, to predict, prevent, and cure diseases. Thank you. And this is the, I'll, uh, I'll once again thank all the organizers, and I would like to come to the end of my talk. So very, very, very nice talk. Again, I am giving my warm thanks to you, Dr. Kundil. Uh, you have thank a, you. Uh, thank you all. Okay, okay. You have a uh, insight. You have given an insight regarding the genome and as well as the molecular interaction involving the host immunity and the viral uh, proteins, viral structural proteins, as well as the RNA molecules. And you are giving us a position to think, giving us in a position to think that we will be able to uh, uh, discover some preventing measures, medicines or vaccine as well as very soon. So uh, this is, I am again give you a warm thanks. And I uh, ask Dr. Ganguly if there are any questions from the audience, please. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for your nice acoustic presentation. Actually, most of the questions that were raised by the students were answered by you by in your next slides. But we have some common question, a questions from uh, Dr. Suman Haldar of Vidyasagar University. Uh, that is there any clue from the genomic study which reveal that the virus is wild type or genetically engineered? Uh, as you see that the uh, comparison with the bat virus, the isolates from bat, as well as the pangolin, there is very close resemblance. So this is one strong evidence that it has come from bat or pangolin and not man-made. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Another question was, uh, uh, is there any effect of blood group on the infection of coronavirus? Uh, so far, I don't know. I haven't seen any report. Okay, okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for your nice presentation. Uh, thank you, all respected faculty members. Uh, so we are able to we are able to finish our session. Uh, we will uh, will finish this uh, today's lecture with a very positive note that we will fight against COVID nineteen with all together. So we are uh, finishing this session with a promotional video that was been uh, that was been casted by our students and by the faculty members of the department so we are about to finish this session and we'll join tomorrow morning at 10 am oh. thank किया है कि कोरोना वायरस के संक्रमण चक्र को तोड़ने के लिए 21 दिन तक पूरे देश को लॉकडाउन किया जाए
रौनक आएगी फिर से गाँव में लौटेगी हसी फिर से साथ सारे यार होंगे ना होगी पाबंदी ना रोक ही कोई फिर से सड़कों पे सब नाचेंगे पटरी पे पही भागेंगे जाएंगे खेलों के मैदान बांटेंगे हम खुशियां लंबी हम मिलकर बांटेंगे फिर से होगी सपनों की उड़ान जो साथ दे दे सारा battling against covid-19 is the high time to show our patience humanity and perseverance please don't take note the power of microbes stay at home stay safe so we respect all the frontline workers we respect all the distinguished scientists who all are battling against covid-19 and we hope that in near future we'll find a way to combat covid-19 so thank you for attending today's session tomorrow we will resume at 10 am with dr rafi mondo thank you all thank you <laughs>